everyone, this is Pastor Todd and Ms. Daphne. We pastor Transformation Church here in Seminole, Texas. And I believe that this message is gonna be a blessing to you. Our vision is to transform lives and change the world. We wanna invite you to join us online or in person Sundays at 10.30 a.m. or Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We hope to see you there. Good to see everybody. Happy anniversary again. I always wondered why we don't call it happy birthday. I've asked my, I've asked my staff that. Because, but you know what? My staff shoots my ideas down, which is fine. Because when you have an idea at my staff, that uh, you have to uh, own it and carry it out and work at it. So I just keep my mouth quiet and let everybody else work. But anyway, thank you. Um, you guys are great. I was... Uh, talking to Daphne, and I just thought, I love how you love your people. I love how you love your family. I love how you love your staff, and I love you, and so thank you. It's, it's just a beautiful thing to watch. Um, and uh, I will tell you this. I miss our Rio Dosa retreats, but when we would go, for the most time, all the pastor's wives would stay in the same room. And we would fellowship. Remember this, Kathy, Helen? And anyway, so um, we would all go to bed after fellowshipping a long night. But here comes 5 o'clock in the morning. And Daphne's getting up. She's got her little light in her bed. She's studying the word. And then after she studies a little bit with her coffee, she goes out for a walk and she prays. But while she's sitting there on her bed, and I'm a light sleeper so I can wake up, I'm watching her. And I say to myself, Romans 8, 1, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I said, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> but she's always been like that. And anyway, I, I, love, I love that. So um, I just had a scripture that, um, a couple scriptures that were on my heart um, for uh, Pastor Todd and Daphne. And you guys probably already know these. Here, let me look. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 16.9 says, For a wide door of opportunity for effectual service has opened to me. There a great and promising one. And there are many adversaries. And I just thought about a great effectual service, a wide door of opportunity came to you 25 years ago. Yeah, for Seminole. But there have been many adversaries. But you know what? You are still standing. And to hear from your kids, you know what? And you've got, you've got, actually, b dream big. Dream big. Just keep doing that. And then the other scripture was um, Acts 20, 24. I, I don't like it in the Amplified because it's so wordy. And we've heard that the Amplified Bible is the girl Bible, the woman Bible. So I, will, I just want to ask, how many men here read out of the Amplified? Oh, hey, I love the Amplified, but most men don't because there's so many words, and most women do. But um, I'm going to try to uh, read it, not out of here, but, um, and Paul said, I was bound, I was bound by the Holy Spirit to go to Jerusalem, not knowing what would befall me. Maybe uh, tribulation, pain, he said, but none of these things move me. Neither do I esteem myself dear. But one thing that I might finish, and you guys are finishers, finish the, the uh, ministry that Jesus entrusted you with. And so I just wanted to encourage you with that. You're doing a great job. Keep running. Keep, keep running your race. So what I wanted to just... Briefly, I was kind of hoping you would do a little more praise and worship <laughs> because, to be really honest, when uh, af after yesterday, I thought, okay, you know, that seemed a little easier, and uh, somebody said, well, you hit it out of the park, and I'm like, well, that's, that's not good for, for me to hear because I might get up and strike out. <laughs> 
you know, Babe Ruth hit the more home runs than anybody, but he struck out more than anybody. <laughs> so anyway, but I'm just going to give you what's on my heart. Um, we, we've been talking about um, what on earth are you wearing? And just about putting on. What are you putting on? What's, what's your spiritual clothing? And um, I'm not going to cover all of that. I'm going to try to be a little more um, new and fresh. But I heard Pastor Todd say that you've been delivered from the spirit of repetition. Yeah. So, um, but I haven't yet. So. <laughs> anyway, but this is what the Lord gave me um, just last night. Um, he said, putting on righteousness, the armor of righteousness, helps you to know who you are so you can know what to do and what you're not supposed to do. And I'm going to share with you a vision. I'm going to try to keep it super, uh, not a vision, a dream, super uh, short. But um, it was this year, and I don't have a lot of spiritual dreams. We talked that you know when you have a spiritual dream, and you'll know it as soon as you wake up, and you'll have the interpretation as soon as you wake up. You don't have to ponder it for days or weeks or go to somebody and say, what does this mean? No, if it's really a spiritual dream, you'll know it, and you'll know what it means. And so I, I have dreams about tornadoes when I get really stressful or anxious. So this was a tornado dream. And I was actually, Daphne, I didn't tell you this, but I was at a meeting of yours. We were at a restaurant because you were there. And I was walking out with my books. It was time for me to go with a friend. Walked out the door, and here's this huge storm. And all of a sudden, I saw a tornado at the right. And it started coming towards me. And right when it got towards me, and I didn't have time to run. It was so fast and so quick. And it came right before me, and it stopped. And a huge, like, 10-foot soldier, armed, you know, with ammunition, stood right before me. And, yeah, I was a little, a little scared. Um, you know, I think when people dealt with angels in the Bible, he always said, fear not, you know. So anyway, he stood there, and I was just standing there looking at him. And he said, move over. So I moved over. And I thought, oh, good, he's going to pass. You know, this is going to be gone. He said, drop your books. So I dropped my books. He said, turn around, turn around, walk forward. Now, jump in the snow and swim. Is that weird? So I jumped in the snow, and I, you can't swim in snow, you know. So I turned around, and I looked, and I said, I can't, and my dream was over. And immediately, the Lord just showed me, number one, um, move to the side because you're in my way. God was saying, you're in my way. Don't be Jesus Jr., you know. God's told me, know who you're called to, know who you're to sow into. And then he said, drop the books. He said, you're carrying the weight of everybody. You know, the Bible says bear one another's burdens. It, does, it doesn't say bear everybody's burdens. And so I was just, I was picking up everybody's care and feeling like I had to meet it and, and take care of it. And, um, and then he said, turn around. He said, you need, to, you, you need to make a turnaround because right now you're, you're, you're doing some things that aren't, you know, me. And then when he said, jump in the snow, and I said, I can't, he said, when I got the interpretation, he said, no, you can't. But Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Gosh, we've known that scripture for 41 years, and it just came alive to me. You could do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You know who you are, and you know what you're supposed to do. And what you're not supposed to do, stop wearing it. Stop carrying it. Anyway, and one of the things he said... Uh, last night was when you put on the armor of love, it keeps you from being cranky, crusty, and crunchy. I heard crunchy is a new word. You know, it's one of the new words. And really, it just means you're rude and you're irritable and you're ungrateful. But when you put on the armor of love, that changes. And I recently had a cranky, crunchy, uh, crusty moment. And my husband is so good to me. I was driving a little car and it was, so, it was so little, it was too little for me, okay? Because every time I had to get in it, I was like doing a, doing a lunge, you know? And then every time I got out, I was like doing a squat, you know? And I said, finally, I said, Bracken, we, I need to get a bigger car. So he got one after looking for a while. And when he got it, I looked at it, and I said, that's a granny car. 
<laughs> but it's a, it's a luxury sedan. And isn't it right? Was that what you would call it? Yeah. And so anyway, I was driving it, and I just was irritable. I'm like, I want my Lexus back. Because when I went to anywhere, United or anywhere that people saw it, they're like, oh, man, this is the coolest car ever. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty cool, you know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and anyway, but now I'm in this, I call it a granny car. Bracken calls it a classy car. So I'm just driving it. And when I drive, I am never cranky. I'm never crusty. And I never look around. You can ask my family. They're like, Mom, we were right beside you, waving at you. We're honking at you. And I'm just like, <laughs> you know, but when I was driving this car, I was, I was clutching the steering wheel, and I was looking to the right, looking at who was next to me, kind of snarling, and then looking at the left. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, that is so wrong. That is not putting on the armor of love, and I need to, I need to get a little more love going on in my life. So just think about that. It, when you wear your armor, it protects you from all these the, all these wrong things and, and wrong stuff going on in your head. So anyway, uh, one of the uh, uh, scriptures that we didn't look at, and I'm not really going to go there, but it's 1 Peter 5.5, 5, where it says, clothe yourself with humility. Yeah. Clothe yourself with humility. And all of you be submissive one to another. And I thought, Lord, you know, I've done teachings on humility. What does humility really mean? It means down to earth, meekness, lowliness, modest, and kind of like a quiet strength. This is an armor that we could all learn. We don't have to be center stage. We don't have to be center uh, attention all the time. This is going to sound really kooky, y'all, but every year I like to come up with a personal motto, like, you know, um, live to give or uh, my best life is the rest of my life. This is going to be crazy. But this, this year, what came up out of my spirit was, I'm a weighty submarine. I'm a weighty. Okay, get that. I'm a weighty submarine. I don't have to be seen. But when I'm summoned, I will emerge and I will speak. And when I'm done, I will submerge. And so, and that's just, just being seen and, 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 you know, do what God's called you to do when you need to do it. And if not, fine, fine. Let somebody, let somebody else do that. So anyway, that was, that was just a little, a little forte, I guess. Is that, that's a good word? That's not a bad word? Okay. (laughs) All right. So if we don't dress our spirit, then our flesh is exposed. And we don't, want to, we, we don't want that. Our flesh is not pretty. This was one of our scriptures, Proverbs 13, 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. You know, and that's what we talked about. This church is a put on church because it's all about Jesus Christ, winning people, growing the kingdom of God. So it's okay to say, we're just, we're just putting it on. We're just putting on Jesus. We're putting on the gospel. Isaiah 61.3, Miss Daphne shared this um, uh, after I ministered. Put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Yeah, so that's a choice. Just, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. You need to learn how to praise. And the best way to learn how, if you're not used to it, is watch people who praise. Get close to somebody who prays, praises. Uh, just standing ne- next to Daphne. Uh, Psalm 103, 1 says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. She, she praises with all that is in her. I can hear her voice, and I, I just feel the energy that's coming off her. And that's how you do it. When you praise the Lord, when you put on praise and you learn to praise, it's with all that is within you, your heart, soul, body, strength. So when you're really praising, your body's going to move a little bit. Now, you don't have to, you know, do a, a, a rap dance or whatever. I don't know what kind of dance is even going on nowadays. But um, you don't have to do that. But your body will change, and something will be coming out of your mouth. Uh, Psalm, we were just talking about this, Bracken and I. Psalm 149.6 says, Let the high praises of God be in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. The high praises, we were talking about this, is your best praise. It's not just standing there, you know, kind of 
you know, looking around and holding the front of your chair. It's going to be your best praise. And your best praise may grow as you grow. But give God your best. And the people who are praising the most aren't the most perfect people. They might be going through a, a huge trial. But you know what? This is, praise ceases the enemy. And we just shut them up when we really do a high praise. And the two-edged sword is the written word and the spoken word. So I challenge you, and even if you uh, read like Psalm 148 and 149, and it talks about praising the Lord, get you a scripture that you can take to, take to the Lord. Like I was thinking of one, Psalm 139, uh, I forget, 23 maybe, where it says, Pray, I praise you, Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. How marvelous are your works. So if you can get a scripture, that's, a, that's also a high praise, and it's the written word, and then you speak it. And that's a two-edged sword, and it, the rest of the verse says, and it wrecks vengeance on your enemy. Listen, we're in a spiritual battle, and, you know, that's one thing that I've really realized this whole year is that we're in a spiritual battle. So we have spiritual weapons that we can do to combat it. Yes, Psalm 133, 1. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. Praise is comely. Psalm 147, 1. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant, and praise is comely. I'm like, what does comely mean? It almost sounds homely, you know? But it's not. It's, it's gorgeous. It's lovely. It's attractive. And it also says it's appropriate. It's the right thing to write to the right thing to do all the time. Now, of course, if you're in uh, Walmart, you don't want to just praise the Lord. You know, that's not cool, you know. <laughs> but you can praise him under your, you know, under your breath or something. But anyway, so that's praise. Proverbs 31, 25. I just think about this. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and her position is strong and secure. So praise helps us to be confident, helps us to be strong. And this is not just a women's verse, guys. Strength and dignity are not just for women. Dignity is about poise and self-respect, and that goes for everybody across the board. So let's go to our theme scripture, Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And I, I don't, we're not going to get to this, I'm sure, um, which is okay. Um, but I don't have one that I really want to get to. Uh, put on the whole armor of God. You've got to be fully clothed. You know, if you walk out on the street with just a hat on, that's not cool. You know, you need to be fully clothed. Shirt, pants, shoes, you know, whatever else. And that's the whole armor of God. You can't just say, okay, well, I'm just going to live today with um, my shield. No, you, you live with all of them every single day. Yes, every single day. Put on the full armor of God. This is in the Amplified. The armor of a heavy-armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully stand up. You could stand and not be successful. To successfully stand up all the strategies and deceits of the evil one. And they're coming at you. I'm telling you, they're coming at you every day. You know, when Jesus, I, think, I don't know if I shared this, but when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, you know, and he, and he talked back to the devil, the Bible says at the end, the enemy left but came back for an opportune time. So you just got, you know, you got to be ready. I was talking to somebody about familiar spirits. They, you know, something that's really tormented you for parts of your life, maybe your earlier life. You know, don't just think they're gone forever. They, they might come back, and it might be years later, many years later, but you just got to be ready. That's part of just standing ready. Yeah, so, okay, let's see. In the message, it says, Ephesians 6, 6.10, and that about wraps it up. God is strong, and he wants you strong. This is a command. It's, it's not, okay, we'll see, we'll see. If you are not strong, you will not stand. And we said this yesterday, that stand is in the Amplified in this passage five times. It's important that we keep standing. 
Keep standing. Keep standing. Ephesians 6, 11, put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies. This is not your supply. This is your clothing, and it's what God has already given you. You just access it. You access it. I got an email from Jensen. This is was pretty funny. This might make it very easy for you guys. Um, Ecclesiastes, I think, 7, 29, somewhere around there. It's uh, the word, which is God, said, I have made you simple, but you have complicated yourselves. Keep, yeah, keep, just keep, keep, keep the gospel, keep the calling, keep your life simple. We complicate it. We get too much in our head. But email said, uh, email said, Jensen Franklin says, there's two weapons for a victorious Christian. So this is going to make it easy for you. Go to church and worship God. You know, until, you're, until you're, you get to the, the, the next step or the next level, just do these things. And do them regularly. Amen? So this is kind of where I wanted to, to uh, stop at right here is number one, I'm going to look in my Bible. I like, I like to look in Bibles. I know everybody now looks at their phone. No, good. I, I, see, the, I see the real Christians. Oh, no, oh, oh. <laughs> no just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we were talking in, our, in Pastor Todd's office. I'm, we're old school. You know, I just like the smell of a Bible. I like to turn the pages. I like to write in the Bible. And I like to throw my Bible. <laughs> and that's why it's taped back together. But listen, if your Bible looks like this, then your life is not a mess. Not that it's perfect, but um, it's, it's not a mess. So anyway, I know. I don't, do you like getting new Bibles? I, uh-uh. Oh, you do? Oh. No. It's, yeah, it's, real, it's, it's hard for me because I got so many notes in my Bible. And, um, yeah, anyway, and this one, too, I've got missing pages and ripped pages, so I just don't preach out of that. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of like what people do. I don't, I don't want to believe that. Bye. No, anyway. Anyway. Okay, Ephesians 6. So let's look at, let's look at, this is probably the one I'm just going to maybe stop at. Um, Ephesians 6, 13, 6, 14. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins, and having put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral rectitude and right standing with God. So the first armor, and maybe the only armor that we get to, which is great, the, the written, I took speak, speech classes when I was young. So sometimes putting an R and a W or just like a rabbit, I, I want to say rabbit <laughs> instead of rabbit. <laughs> I know. So I, sometimes things come out a little different. So the written word of God, it says tighten. Pull it in close to you. This is the word of God. Tighten your belt. The more notches you have, the more you have conquered. Do you remember David when he was out um, in, uh, in the shepherd fields and then uh, killing the lion and the bear? Those are two notches in his belt. And then when he faced Goliath, he already had some notches in his belt. So he, was, he, wasn't, he wasn't afraid. So get you some notches in your belt, and you do that by the word of God and obeying the word of God and overcoming adversities and difficult situations. The loin belt of truth, it was the least noticeable piece of armor. It was boring, but it was the most significant. That's probably why the enemy really tries to keep us out of the word. Yeah. This is the most vital to your success and freedom in victorious living. And I can honestly tell you that when my word intake starts diving, I start diving. It is, it really is true. John 8, 31 says, therefore, Jesus, therefore, said to those Jews which had believed him, if you abide in my word, 
then you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And I thought about, uh, we heard this, and maybe you guys have heard it too, um, about three little monkeys. Have you all heard that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Three, I, I don't sing, so I'm going to kind of, ha, ha, maybe whatever. Three little monkeys sitting in a tree. One cried out, you're not free, you're not free. The word of God rose up in me, and I slapped that devil right out of that tree. <laughs> Two little monkeys sitting in a tree. One cried out, you're not free, you're not free. The word of God rose up in me, and I slapped that devil right out of that tree. That just feels good to do that. <laughs> One little monkey sitting in a tree. He cried out, you're not free, you're not free. The word of God rose up in me, and I slapped and kicked that devil out of the tree. Anyway, so you know what? No more monkeys sitting in a tree. I'm free. But he's always wants to tell us we're not free. But it's the word of God that, that has to rise up and that you use to combat him. And uh, uh, this, <laughs> I don't know why I think of this when I think of monkeys, but um, I used to play tennis, and I wasn't very good. And uh, so I'd always make mistakes, you know, do things that, you know, just hit stupid balls and, you know, easy balls. And so anyway, um, my cuss word on the court was shoot a monkey. (laughs) And because I made so many mistakes, my friends kept telling me, Donna, there's no more monkeys to be shot. (laughs) So I quit tennis. (laughs) Anyway, the word of God. If the belt was tightly fitted, you could maneuver with the sword and the shield that were all attached to it. So just make sure that you're, 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 you're tightly, you know, committed to the Word of God. And there doesn't have to be a special time that you do it. You know, Daphne does it at 5 o'clock in the morning. You know, you do it whenever is, is the right timing for you. And even if it's just... Starting out, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, 30 minutes. Just do it. Just make time for it. The loin belt was the center of the armor. You got to find your central, and your central needs to be the Word of God. It holds every piece of armor together, so we must live from the central piece. This really is the most important piece because you get all the others from the written word of God, right, right? 2 Timothy 3.16, you might know this one. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work. And that's what, we're, that's what we do at these conferences. That's what you do when you spend time in the Word. That's what you do when you go to church. You're just getting equipped. You're getting equipped for warfare. You're getting equipped for the purpose in your life. You know, you're getting the ammunition to be able to stand and stand strong. So, and this is what the Word does. That's why we like Word churches. You know, we don't want fluff churches. You know, we, we don't, we want, we want, we want the Word. And, you know, that's what a lot of people... I think, not a lot, I shouldn't say that, but Bracken's going to teach the word, and he's not, he's, he's not going to back down, and you are too, Pastor Todd. You're not afraid to do it, you know, and if there's the door, you know, now I know Pastor Hagen says, don't let the door hit you on the way out, you know, and we want, we want to minister to people. We want to help people, but the only way is you got to get the word, Jesus is the Word, the Word made flesh, and He dwelt among us. So we're giving you Jesus when you're, we're giving you the Word. Amen? Equipped is clothed and furnished. So put your belt on and wear it well. Do I have any more time? Okay, just, just a bit. I'm just doing one more. So this one, and I, th- I, this one is, I'm a little, not timid, but... Because Daphne's whole ministry um, and purpose is to bring righteousness to people and the body. So I'm, not, I, I'm just going to say a couple things. <laughs> the breastplate of righteousness. 
Ephesians 6, 14, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate protects your heart. It protects your core. Yeah, and, and that's the core. I mean, our core is where we live out of. And when you know you're righteous, you're going to treat people better. Yeah, yeah. Our heart can condemn us, for if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God, and the righteousness gives us confidence to stand before God, unashamed, without blame, without guilt, and that gives us confidence. We don't crawl into the throne room of God. No, even if we messed up profoundly or profusely or whatever. You just walk on in, receive mercy and grace to help in time of need, and then you thank him for it, and then, and then you leave, and don't mention it again. The breastplate was the shiniest, most glorious, and the heaviest of all armor. Yeah. The shiniest and the most glorious. That's probably why the enemy wants to keep us, you know, down and out and, and feeling like we're unworthy. Because this, this is weighty. The breastplate's weighty. It's, and you know, it's the heaviness of God. I was thinking about this scripture. It's in, maybe you could help me. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.13, where it talked about how the priests were ministering to the Lord in the temple. Was that it? And the glory came in. I was... In the temple, yeah, and the priest could not stand to minister. And I thought about that. I said, when the glory comes in, that's the only time we lose our stance. And then, and then you, you know, you, you, you get down on the floor and you just worship him and you acknowledge him. When you know you're in Christ, we're righteous because what he did for us, not we do for him. We got to keep telling ourselves that. That's, you talked about that. Was that at church Sunday? Somebody talked. Somebody just recently talked about that. Yeah, you did. When was it yesterday? I don't even know. I, oh, I don't remember. <laughs> All right, striving, striving, and struggling, and worn out, and just not good enough, are are words from the enemy. I remember at what house we were in about sixteen years ago. I was struggling so bad. I just felt like I couldn't. I couldn't get to, to God. I, I, I just was under so much guilt and condemnation, and, and I wasn't doing enough and, or being enough. And one day I got out of bed, and I turned, and the Lord spoke to me, and I saw a line going this way. And he said, you're trying to get to a place where you already are. Live from that place. Stop trying to get there. It's, it's, sometimes I don't know why we think we've just got to try so hard. Live from that place of being good enough, approved, and blessed, and stop trying to earn it. The breastplate of righteousness. Okay, I'm done. Let's stand up. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands towards heaven. Lord, we receive. We receive your word, your word in our heart that keeps us from sinning against you. And we thank you for your mercy that are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness unto us. Just remind us, Lord, of who we are and what we have on the inside of us and how to wear our clothing, our spiritual clothing, well so that we might glorify you and that you might order our feet to the right people to love and help and lead to Jesus. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you guys for having us. We felt so honored and so blessed to even be a part, uh, not only of your lives, but your ministry. And we're blessed. Thank you. You guys are blessed.